I know how overwhelming it is trying to search for information on diabetes on the internet. Being told to eat healthier sounds so vague. Everywhere you look, there's conflicting information or people trying to sell you vitamins or supplements. And it can feel really hard to figure out what to do, what's true and what's not. But look no further because we are here to present you the hard facts specifically when it comes to diabetes. My name is Charmaine and I'm a registered dietitian that helps you reverse type 2 diabetes. And my name is Galia. I'm a coach in the Reversing Diabetes program specializing in exercise. Today, we're going to talk about the top two reasons you may not be making progress in your reversing diabetes journey. As you can imagine, we have seen hundreds of people living with type 2 diabetes and have successfully guided them towards reversal. What we have noticed is despite being regimented with exercise and with nutrition, there are two key factors that are often overlooked, which may be holding you back on your journey towards better health. Poor sleep and high stress are two of the most significant and often overlooked lifestyle factors that worsen our insulin sensitivity and therefore worsen our blood glucose balance. In this episode, we will outline how poor sleep and high stress hold us back from making progress and some tips on how you can improve your sleep and stress levels. We're going to start out by talking about poor sleep and its impact on insulin resistance and therefore blood glucose levels. So the first thing is that poor sleep reduces our insulin sensitivity. So research has shown that sleep deprivation can significantly reduce insulin sensitivity. A study by Spiegel et al. found that after only one week of sleep restriction to four hours per night, that participants exhibited a 40% decrease in glucose tolerance, a marker of insulin resistance. Another study by Buxton et al. De demonstrated that chronic sleep restriction, where participants were only allowed 5.6 hours of sleep per night for three weeks, led to reduced insulin sensitivity and higher evening glucose levels compared to when they were allowed 8.5 hours of sleep per night. These two studies show us that sleep deprivation from a shorter time span, right, of, you know, one week of poor sleep to sleep deprivation for longer periods of time equally negatively impact our insulin sensitivity. The second thing is that poor sleep can also increase appetite and therefore weight gain. So sleep deprivation itself affects hormones that regulate hunger, such as leptin and ghrelin. Leptin, which suppresses appetite, decreases, while ghrelin, which stimulates appetite, increases. This imbalance can lead to increased calorie intake and therefore weight gain, contributing to insulin resistance. Research by Spiegel et al. highlighted that sleep restriction led to increased hunger and appetite, especially for high carbohydrate foods. High carbohydrate foods in today's world, unfortunately, typically mean ultra processed foods, which are often high in glycemic index. Foods that are high in glycemic index are more likely to increase our blood glucose levels. So. Weight gain, particularly central adiposity, is also strongly linked to insulin resistance. A study by Chaput et al. found that short sleep duration was associated with increased body mass index and waist circumference, both of which are risk factors for insulin resistance. Another thing that poor sleep alters is glucose metabolism. Sleep deprivation interferes with the body's ability to metabolize glucose, and research by Donga et al. found that just one night of partial sleep deprivation reduced insulin sensitivity in healthy subjects, indicating a direct effect of poor sleep on glucose metabolism. And this disruption is partly due to impaired brain regulation of glucose production. A study by Leprault et al. found that sleep loss affects the hypothalamus, ability to regulate glucose production by the liver, contributing to elevated blood sugar levels. The second thing that we would like to share with you guys is how high stress impacts insulin resistance and therefore blood glucose levels. So high stress and hormonal changes are interlinked. Chronic stress elevates our cortisol levels, which are known to increase blood glucose levels by promoting gluconeogenesis, otherwise known as the production of glucose by the liver, and reducing glucose uptake by the cells. A review by RZA explained that cortisol's effects on glucose metabolism can actually contribute to the development of insulin resistance. Stress-induced hormonal changes also affect insulin secretion. 
A study by Rosemond et al. found that individuals with higher stress levels had elevated cortisol and insulin levels, suggesting that stress actually contributes to hyperinsulinemia and also insulin resistance. High stress is also linked to an increased inflammatory response. So chronic stress leads to a persistent inflammatory state, which impairs insulin signaling pathways. Inflammation has been shown to interfere with the function of insulin receptors, reducing their sensitivity. Research by Black highlighted that stress-induced inflammation plays a critical role in the pathogenesis of insulin resistance. Another study by Pernal et al. showed that individuals with higher levels of inflammatory markers, such as C-reactive protein, had greater insulin resistance, supporting that link between stress-induced inflammation and metabolic disturbances or changes. High stress can also affect behavioral factors. Stress often leads to unhealthy behavior, such as poor dietary choices and physical activity, both of which exacerbate insulin resistance. Emotional eating, often triggered by stress, tends to involve consumption of high-calorie, high-sugar foods, which contribute to weight gain and insulin resistance. Research by Adam and Appel demonstrated that stress-induced eating patterns lead to metabolic dysregulation. Physical inactivity, commonly associated with high stress levels, further worsens insulin resistance. A study by Choi et al. found that high-stress individuals were less likely to engage in physical activity, which is crucial for maintaining insulin sensitivity and glucose homeostasis. If you are on a journey to improve your metabolic health and are serious about working towards reversal, focusing on regulating your sleep, improving your sleep quality, and reducing stress or improving stress management are non-negotiables. So now we've spoken a little bit about the relationship of poor sleep and high stress on our insulin sensitivity, insulin resistance levels. Let's talk a little bit about some tips on how you can actually improve your sleep quality and better manage your stress levels. So starting with sleep, the first is going to be to establish a consistent sleep schedule. So research by Z and Turek has found that maintaining regular sleep-wake schedules is crucial for our circadian rhythms, which leads us to better sleep quality and overall health. What this means is setting a time to go to bed and to wake up every single day, that being the same time, helps to regulate our body's internal clock and therefore our metabolism. The second tip is going to be to create a relaxing bedtime routine. So a study by Irish et al. highlighted that bedtime routines that involve relaxing activities can significantly improve sleep quality and reduce sleep onset latency. So developing a calming bedtime routine that helps us associate that it's time to wind down and you know turn off for the day actually helps us get to bed more effectively. The third is going to be to optimize our sleep environment. So the National Sleep Foundation recommends that creating an ideal sleep environment actually helps promote uninterrupted and restful sleep. This includes factors like temperature, light and noise control. So blacking out your room, getting blackout curtains or blind, making sure that the temperature of the room that you sleep in is low, it's a little bit cold, right? And that there are no disturbances to interrupt your sleep. And here are tips to reduce stress. Research by Grossman et al. found that mindfulness-based stress reduction programs significantly reduce stress and improve psychological well-being, so make sure you practice mindfulness and meditation. Another way to reduce stress is to exercise regularly. A review by Anderson and Shiva found that regular physical activity is effective in reducing stress, anxiety, and depression, contributing to overall mental health. Third tip is going to be to connect with other people. So Cohen and Wills demonstrated that social support actually acts as a buffer against the adverse effects of stress, improving both psychological and physical health outcomes. So Basically, social support is essential for managing stress. Spending time with friends, family, loved ones, participating in activities, connecting with other people helps us lift our mood and therefore allows us to cope more effectively with any stresses that we have. 
By incorporating all of these tips into your daily routine, you can improve your sleep quality and reduce your stress levels, which can have a positive impact on your overall health, including better insulin sensitivity and blood glucose control. All of this being said, if you are wondering why you have plateaued in your reversing diabetes journey, or are looking for other areas to focus on when working to improve your metabolic health, now you know, sleep and stress reduction cannot be overlooked. If you like what you heard in this episode and can spare 60 seconds to give us a great review so that the podcast can reach more people, we'd really appreciate it as it can help us change many more lives.